Today we have a piece of river birch. This comes to us from my good friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. I'll tell you, when Dave uh, described this to me, he says a piece of wood's on the way and here's what it is. He said it was all cracked, had a huge knot right in the middle of it. The cats peeled all the bark off and I'm thinking, well, geez Dave, thanks a lot. Why are you sending that to me? But here it is and I'm liking it quite a little bit. Looks completely turnable to me. Good evening, uh, we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy, let's take a closer look at it. He also said the green is unremarkable, not particularly gorgeous. I see some color in there, not much, but some. I see some color in there. Yeah, there's a big crack right there. And there's another one on this end. But you know, cracks, a lot of people are afraid of cracks. I'm not saying don't be cautious of cracks. I'm not saying that, but look it over. This crack comes to a dead stop. You don't see it down here. I know it's rough, but I don't see it there. I don't see it on this end. So it's not like it runs the whole distance. Now this one's really big, but it comes to a dead stop. Can't see it here either. And you know, it doesn't, it doesn't run through to that end. If you got a crack like this or the other one that runs all the way through and comes down to the edges, then you got a problem. But that's not the case here. So what about the knot? Well, that is a big knot. That's a big nasty knot. But so what? It's just a knot. It'll cut with a chisel, good sharp chisel, it'll cut. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut that right away. That's gonna be the top of the piece. Cause I gotta preserve what little bark the cat left, which is actually quite a bit. It's thin. It may have been much thicker before the cat got, got a hold of it. I don't know. From my point of view, it looks fine. We are missing some right there, but we'll have a big bowl cut out of here, so it'll just be missing right here. But I see some color in there. I see some grain compression somewhere I saw it. Yeah, grain compression right here. See that? I love that. So hopefully we'll run into that on the inside. Yeah, looks good to me. The piece is currently about eight by nine by five inches thick at the at the top of the knot here. So what I'm gonna do is find the middle of this top. I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna take it to my drill press, cut a flat spot, about a three inch or so flat spot, three and a half inches if necessary, for my chuck jaws to set against. In the middle of that, I'm gonna drill a hole for a woodworm screw if it looks good if the knot looks good. If not, then we'll put a faceplate ring on here. It, uh, we'll get a good hold on it, no doubt about it. So let me take care of that and I'll meet you over here at the lathe and we'll get to turning. So here's what I've done. This is a three and a half inch hole that I cut for a flat spot for my chuck jaws to set against. So I'm gonna, it was, it was not easy to drill, so I'm thinking it's probably okay. It's probably nice and hard. So I'm just gonna put this on the woodworm screw and see what happens. If this doesn't work, we can put a faceplate ring on there. And it is not working. It's not getting tight. So, next step, faceplate ring. So this is a faceplate ring. Takes the place of a faceplate. With the faceplate, you have to take the chuck off. With this, you do not. This has a dovetail lip right here. And that meshes with the dovetail on my chuck jaws. So I will just put that on there and open that up into that recess and we'll have a nice metal to metal fit. And that ain't going anywhere. So now we'll bring up the tailstock and tool rest. I'm gonna start on this corner. I'm gonna work from the top side down to keep whatever bark is still there on there. And we'll see what kind of speed we can get. About 550 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on.
Well, it's coming along, coming along. There's one crack here that seems to be gone. It, it's still right here, but it's not there. And over here where the big crack is, it's still there, but it's getting smaller. So I think we're going to be okay. I think I'm about to the point where I can start coming up from the bottom, which is a whole lot easier and cleaner. I am going to come down here and flatten off the bottom and then come back to the side, but the bottom is so irregular that it's hard to start the cut right here. So we'll work on that. Just a slight hint of the crack. Still a little bit of pith, but probably not enough to cause an issue. I'm going to mark out for a tenon. Maybe I can pick the speed up now, too. Uh, about 710 RPM. I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. That's good. Now we can come back over here to the side profile and see what we can do about that. Okay, our square ends are gone. So is most of the bark, dang it. I don't know what else I can do here. Okay, well, I'm relatively happy with that. So, time for sanding. I've got the lathe spinning forward and reverse at 360 RPM. I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400 grit. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some mm, probably sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, I'm curious what this is going to look like. The green is pretty plain. There's a little bit of color here and there, but not much. I'm hoping this dark spot here will get much darker. Well, it's darker, but not a lot. This is sanding sealer I'm applying, shellac based sanding sealer. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. And I'll put on two coats of this and two coats of shellac over it. This is a fairly open grain wood, I would say. Real smooth though, real, real smooth. Okay, there you go. Uh, another coat of that, two coats of shellac. I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside.
See you in a bit. Well, I came out here today thinking I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this, and that's hollow it out, out to about here. But then I started looking it over, and can you see that compression grain right there? Yeah, see that? That's pretty cool. Those are ridges that doesn't just look like that, it feels like that. And they start clear out here and go all the way. And then on this side, same thing but not quite as dramatic. But you can feel these. And so I started looking the piece over and wondering if I should make another hollow for him. You know, I, I hardly ever do that, but I just did one and now I'm thinking of doing another one. Maybe drill this out. This is a three and a half inch hole that I've got started here. I could drill that out and then I could use my hollowing tools to hollow out the inside. I, I kind of like that this whole side is all bark and this whole side is almost no bark. There's a little bit here. And I really love the compression grain. So what's your vote? Leave it this size opening and hollow it out or open it all the way up? If I open it all the way up, then it's just going to be another ordinary live edge or natural edge bowl. I seldom do this because I don't like, you know, I always say I make artwork. I don't make useful things. They're, they're just meant to look at, appreciate the grain and the color and that sort of thing. And what are you going to do with this? If, if I hollow this out, what's, what good is it? It isn't any good. What are you going to put in there? Maybe a candle standing upright or something. But again, it could just be artwork. So I really would like your opinion if you'd mind voting for me. What? Leave it like this? Just hollow that out? Yeah, I'm kind of leaning that way myself. Uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out down towards the bottom, and then and then we'll start hollowing the sides. Hey, good idea. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna start at two and three quarters. That might be a little big. I probably should have gone smaller, but we'll see how it goes. Two and three quarters at about uh, 200 RPM. Again, this gets kind of monotonous, so I'm not going to show it all to you. Uh, I'll bring you back when it's time to start hollowing it out. Well, that was altogether an awful experience. I'm glad you didn't have to watch it. It took me over an hour to drill as much as I have here. Mostly I was concerned with this top edge. I wanted to get my three and a half inches again because I didn't want to have to turn that away with a chisel and ruin what we have going on because I really like this part here. That's why there's a lip right here. I, I stopped just below and then there's a, a lip down at the bottom as well because I need to blend that, blend the bottom with the sides once I get to that point. See that knot and the crack in the knot? I think what was happening, it was incredibly noisy. I probably lost 60% of my hearing. And yeah, I do probably have earplugs somewhere. I don't know where they are. Anyway, uh, I think that probably opens and closes. And this thing was screeching like you wouldn't believe. I'm sure the whole neighborhood heard it. And I'm a long ways from my neighbors. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is start the hollowing process. I'm going to use this straight hollower for as, for as long as I can and probably to blend the bottom down in there and then once I'm done with that then I'll switch to this gooseneck hollower so that I can get up up under here but that's a ways away so I'll start with this we're going to be turning at 670 rpm number one hollower mask and face shield on
So that's what that looks like. I have to be really careful just inside the opening because we've got a low spot here and then a high spot over here and I'm trying not to mess up the natural edge but I'm, I'm never going to be able to get it to blend because one was one's so high this one and this one's so low this one's about right the way it should be but that one's pretty thick but I can't there's nothing I can do about that anyway so that's what that part looks like and I'll just keep at it I'm just about done I think so I'll just keep working at it and I'll bring you back in a bit. I almost made a mistake in hollowing this out. I think I was measuring how thick the walls are here, but they're a whole lot thinner here. And that's because the piece is kind of an oval. So they're really thick here, but they're reasonable here, about half an inch or so. And then here, this is really thin. This is barely an eighth of an inch right here. And over here, it's... Uh, almost three quarters of an inch so I'm glad when I, I stopped when I did I'm gonna do start sanding with a, an 80 grit sanding strip on my drill and then I'll work up through 400 I don't know you're not gonna be able to see the finish going on in there I'll just bring you back when it's time to take the tenon off I'll get some finish in there get it all sanded up through 400 get the finish on there but I'll show you what this looks like as soon as I get my mask on I'll have the piece spinning in reverse at about 350 rpm And I'll do forward as well. Well, that's pretty easy, won't take too long. I'll bring it back in a bit. I mounted a block of wood up in my chuck and I did not think this through very well, so I'm really hoping that this isn't too big to fit in the hole. I didn't, I didn't consider that, I guess. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't feel like it's hitting the bottom. It's real close, it goes in, but it doesn't, it doesn't get to the bottom. I think what I'm gonna do, I made this years ago, and I, I probably didn't even make it to any particular size. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit towards the back side here. It must be thicker here than it is here. I'll be back in a minute. Well, I did that. It only took one pass, and it fits in there, but it's still kind of rocked. But now that I brought the tailstock up, it feels okay. So we'll give it a try. We'll spin the piece up, see if it's running true. Oh, boy. <laughs> I turned it at kind of a high speed. Yeah, it's running true. I hope I can get it back off of there. So I've got the speed at about 550 RPM. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and begin to commence to removing that tenon. See if we have clearance. We have good clearance. I see half my tenon broke away there. That's okay, we'll get over it. I need to get a little bit closer here, a little bit higher. And I'm gonna switch to a 3 8 inch sweat back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer. Now that sure didn't work, did it? So now I'm going to go take this to the workbench. I'll just chisel that off, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, this one just about got away from me, didn't it? One little tiny nick, I'll show you what it is. But here it is. One river birch bubble bowl. I'm going to call it a bubble bowl. It looks like a bubble to me. The way the top rises up there. Bubble bowl. Look at that. Look at the. Look at that. That's the compression grain I was talking about earlier. You can feel it. You can see it. It's incredible. It's all around there. And over here as well. 
It's just so, so cool. I like that. This was a whole lot of work that I caused myself by not turning it normally. And this took about four days because I kept getting interrupted. So I neglected, I think, to tell you that I sanded the top here. I didn't, didn't show it to you either. I sanded the top, the bark, and on the whole top with my sandal flex. So it's all smooth. It's good to go. There's the inside, that big old knot in there. And the bottom, this is where the whoopsie was, where it got away from me. There's a little tiny nick right here, right there. Got a little bit of dark coloring in there. That hole right there, that's the pith of that knot. And the knot has a hole in it as well, but it doesn't go all the way through. I just, I, I really like it. I like this view the best with the partial bark and the grain compression and it, it just looks really cool. Looks all wrinkled up. Bubble Bowl, what do you think? What would you call it? Thank you Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.